Hello, this is Mike from the Forager's Path. Today I want to talk about field guides for the United States in general for foraging and wild foods. In a separate video, we talked about field guides that were more specific to the American West and especially the American Southwest. But today it's going to be more general for the lower 48. So before we start talking about these books, I want to uh, just point out that the best way to learn foraging and the plants in your area is to learn from a person who lives near you and is a local resource. Uh, these are the, this is going to be the best way of learning face to face, one to one, or in a small group. So the field guides are a good resource in addition to learning from an individual. Uh, as far as which foods you should know, the best wild foods are those that you're going to find near where you live. And I generally say learn the plants within a 50 mile radius. But if you're starting out, you might want to just learn the plants within 50 feet or 500 feet of your home. And um, I'm not saying that in a, in a, in a sarcastic way or to, to joke, but within 50 feet of your house, there's a good chance that there's some nice edible greens that are very high in nutrition uh, right outside your home. It might be in your garden or in, a, these are often the weeds that people are picking and trying to get rid of. I also wanna point out that there's a lot of experienced foragers who are very knowledgeable and um, they, they don't go public with websites and YouTube videos and writing books and trying to be nationally known. They may only be known within their own community. These people are every bit as knowledgeable and a uh, treasured resource as more famous authors. Uh, so don't overlook these locals uh, that, that you may be interacting with every day but not know uh, this, this other skill that they have. Um, so uh, with that in mind, I want to go on to the books. So all of these books that I talk about today, they all have accurate information. And that's important because there are people out there, there are books where um, the, the authors basically did all their knowledge from Google. They would Google a plant and write down all the traditional uses, the chemistry, the nutrition, etc but they have no direct hands-on experience with working with the plant. So uh, when I say accurate, it means that these people have a long history of working with the, the plants that they write about. The books are user-friendly, and uh, that's important to know because some books are full of information. And they may be more of an academic textbook, which is more dry and not that interesting. And you get a lot of information, but you're not sure how to use it. So these books are, are really meant to be used by people going out into the field who want to taste the plants. Uh, they have in-depth knowledge on individual plants. And so that's important because some books will say something like, well, this, this green, this, the leaves are edible, the flowers are edible. And that's all they tell you is they're edible. And if you really want to incorporate a wild food into your diet, you need to know more information just than the fact that it has been eaten in the past. Uh, so there's a lot of detailed information on how to find it, uh, how to identify it, where it grows, what part to harvest, when to harvest, uh, how to make it into food, uh, those, those, that kind of information. Uh, these books are not specific to the American Southwest, but there is enough overlap that if you are a dedicated forager in the American Southwest, all these books would be worthwhile having, uh, but they are going to be more general on the lower 48. So good old Yule Gibbons, uh, he was an early inspiration for me. And this is a book uh, that I think should be in every library. It is a true classic and it's small enough to fit in your cargo pocket on your pants. It's a, like a, a really a pocket field guide. Uh, Yule was uh, a forager that 
back in the 60s and 70s who was doing this before it became, well, I hate to say the word trendy in the modern world. Um, and this book often gets lost because it's, it's, all, it's, it's been done. It's been out there for decades and it isn't as flashy and showy. It doesn't have glossy color photos. It's not a coffee table book. Uh, but what it is, is it's like a, a work, it's a tool, it's a working field guide. And the illustrations are ink drawings, and they're botanically accurate, and so they will be very helpful in uh, identifying plants. And you can just trust what he says. He's, these are foods that he's worked with for 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, and this is one of my early books, and it's a treasured part of my library. You can often find this book in used bookstores, and you'll see the price up here on uh, the cover was uh, $2.95. And so it's often about that price in used bookstores. So Stocking the Wild Asparagus, highly, highly recommended. This is a more modern book uh, by John Callis called Edible Wild Plants. And this book focuses specifically on greens. He doesn't get into flowers and tubers and berries, etc. Uh, but what he does is he does it extremely well. He has a, a chapter, not just a half page or a full page, but a chapter on each green. And everything you ever wanted to know about dandelion or goosefoot or nettles or purslane. And uh, uh, this book is, is a really good resource for wild greens. One thing to know about greens is they tend to be higher in fiber, vitamins, minerals, uh, and overall nutrition compared to even organic greens from farmers markets and health food stores. Uh, the wildness part is important uh, for, for providing us with nutrition. Uh, so again, this book is limited, but it's very well at what it does. These are two books by an author named Samuel Thayer. One's called The Forger's Harvest. And this next one is called Nature's Garden. Samuel Thayer is from Wisconsin, and he is the best known author on foraging in the United States. He's based in Wisconsin, and his books are going to be more Great Lakes centric first, and then I would say uh, east of the Mississippi, but they also include a lot of wild greens uh, and, uh, and wild foods beyond greens for the western United States. These are both really good books to have. Um, and what, uh, what I find interesting is in one of his books why he lists every state, and then he gives a, a percentage number for how relevant that book is to that state. For example, where I live in Arizona, the book, uh, there's 61% of the book is, is geared towards our state. If you're in Pennsylvania, it's 100%. If you're in Wisconsin, it's like 94%. Uh, so you can do a, a quick scan to see how relevant it is for your state. Uh, but in general, uh, I would say, um, like I say, Great Lakes, east of the Mississippi, and then third would be the American West. But because he's so knowledgeable and uh, has really devoted his professional career to, to being a forager and to education, these are both really good books to have. And then this one, um, I saved it for last because in some ways it's just, uh, I, I tend to gush over this book. It's called Forging and Feasting by Dina Falcone, and the author, I'm sorry, the artist is illustrated by Wendy Hollander. And this book is a visual feast. Uh, it's a work of art, but beyond just what some people might call eye candy, it's not just pretty pictures. These are botanically accurate drawings using colored pencil that are very helpful for identifying the plant, yet it's also just beautiful to look at. So you can appreciate it on different levels. This is the most visual foraging book that I've come across. Um, and what I like about this book, in addition to the accurate information and the beautiful 
uh, illustrations is that the second half of the book has a lot of master recipes for a wide variety of foods. I mean, it's a, it's a very thorough cookbook on its own using many of the wild foods, but then these master recipes can be easily tweaked and, and personalized depending on, on uh, how you want to make, make the food. I want to show you some of the, 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 the plant drawings that are in this book to give you an idea of what's involved. So this is violet, <clears throat> and uh, there are other species of viola that are edible beyond what she mentions here. But uh, I just want to point out here that she talks about spring in flower, and then this is what the plant's going to be looking like. And then she lets you uh, gives you an idea of exactly what the leaf is going to look like, and then individual flower petals. Um, and then what's good for, there's 50 plants in here, and each plant, there's a box at the bottom where she talks about uh, the habitat and then the culinary uses. There's a tremendous amount of information shared in a little bit of space here at the bottom. And then, um, You'll see at the very bottom right here, she tells you what pages uh, these uh, have recipes that include this plant. Uh, so again, it's extremely well organized. And this is burdock, um, and this is one of the most plants just have one full page. Burdock actually has two. And uh, I won't go over all the details on this illustration, but let's just say it's very well done. It's uh, botanically accurate. And there's a lot of academic information uh, on, in these illustrations. And so here's the leaves and the roots, and then here's more uh, the seeds and the flowers. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to seeing you out on the trail sometime.